I believe we are now recording, and we're now ready. Okay, so Bonnie, good morning. Welcome morning. to Wade College. We are super excited and thrilled to have you here with, with us today. Um, I, have, I have always loved your art, and I have seen you create some so, such incredible work. And, um, you know, I remember when we first kind of knew each other, you were kind of just getting started in this body of work. And it's come so far. It really and has. <laughs> it really has. And it's just, I mean, wow. Um, so uh, everyone, let me introduce Bonnie just a little bit. Uh, she uh, has been, uh, I guess you own, don't you own the Encaustic Center of Dallas, Bonnie? Yes, I have two working studios, teaching studios, uh, non-accredited and it won the Bonnie studio and yes, the other is the encaustic center teaching the okay. art of painting with wax and so how, how many years have you been been doing that uh the Bonnie studio I've had which is mostly well it started off mostly oil and acrylic painting and that's what we still have but um in classes but it's really grown into a lot of mixed media workshops as well and I've had that about 17 18 years and then the Encaustic Center about 11 years and I bring artists, guest artists in from all over the country to teach different methods and their their unique way of approaching Encaustic and uh, again other other mediums. Um, I wanted to tell everybody that um, of course you know Bonnie is an excellent teacher but she's a great example of the kind of artist that when you look at her work, <laughs> it's it's very clear that she practices what she teaches and she practices all, all of that and she puts it to, to really amazing use. Uh, Bonnie, um, so you have been a professional artist in the DFW Metroplex for many years as well. You've been exhibiting at professional art galleries as well. Um, is there one gallery in particular that, that you, know, you really belong to, so to speak? Not at this you know, time. Yeah, no. not at this time. Um, I've had incredible shows, uh, mm -hmm. well, experiences for me at um, at uh, Con Drennan Contemporary at Liliana Block. Um, I've had, you know, s several one person shows here over the years and have been in group shows. Um, uh, but in the recent years, I've been a little bit more connected and invested in a gallery that's in New York. Um, and sadly, uh, the one person show that was coming up this uh, past May, you know, COVID occurred. Oh, so right. that didn't happen. But in a way, I'm kind of glad because the work has, even since May, has just taken on new dimensions. So when it is rescheduled, you know, I think it'll be a whole different experience. So um, I'm, I'm actually pretty, pretty glad about that. Um, so, so yeah, so, uh, so yeah, my attention has been up there a little bit more the last couple of years and I did have a one person show up there with another gallery called number four and, uh, the gallery that I'm associated with up there right now is, uh, called, uh, M. David and Co. Michael wow. David. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations that your yeah. career has blossomed so much in the last several years oh, and I'm so happy for you. Um, Bonnie, do you mind if uh, I read a little bit from your artist statement to share that with everyone today? Oh, sure. Okay. And if I get it wrong or I butcher it, let me know, okay? Uh, listen, everyone, uh, Bonnie uh, puts so much thought into what she does, and her conceptual message, I think, really clarifies that. She says, and, and I'm quoting now, Investigating life's illusory nature and questioning all things seemingly stable, I construct new realities, environments, and objects which are at once ephemeral and eternal. I work with a variety of materials, both natural and manufactured, branches, roots, foam, acrylic, latex, something called Tivec, you'll have to tell us about that, rawhide, fur, wings, metal, and vinyl, creating newly contextualized forms unexpected yet somehow familiar. Everything uh, worth knowing, I'm, not, I'm almost done, everything worth knowing is cloaked in a paradox because everything substantial defies being revealed in its totality. And that's a quote by Mark Nepo. Bonnie, 
Yes. Tell us about that a little bit in your own words. Could you please? Um, more, more specifically about the quote or the materials or what area? All of it. But let's, let's start with the quote because that quote was, um, that's a lot to put in your brain pan, you know, to think about and understand. What is it is, and I and I feel like it's it's hard to talk about my work in some ways because um, it's really hard to talk about things that are formless and when you're making forms. And so the only way in is kind of by this paradox by by making things and constructions that uh, sometimes point to some deeper truth, I feel. And so we all feel like we have an inner life and an inner truth and a consciousness. And so those are things that maybe don't have a particular form, a 3D form. And so, um, you know, how do you talk about that interior life? And so I try to create situations and make objects that question uh, reality because I mean when I think about stability and our expectations and constructs you know maybe sometimes in your life you've 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 considered your your trajectory or who you are in a particular way and maybe you wake up to something that's a surprise to you like why did I always think that and you know maybe it's a, a given but it's not really true for you or not true anymore and so you know, with this pandemic, I think it was put a magnifying lens on all of this where, you know, things that we saw as stable, you know, just kind of rocked our world. And, you know, then, you know, when you think about it, really what, what was stable and, you know, it's a continuum of thought and expectations and hopes and, and um, memories think it has a lot to do with like I, I just heard a quote that I really loved was that we're always painting our memories hmm. and you know we have all of our notions about ourselves and who we are that we bring to our work and that's that's all we can bring to it and so everything uh with our hands that we're making is is uh you know based on our you know preconceived notions about materials and and again about stability um and so uh you know and then it's like what is what is um good and what is bad you know all these things that we apply to situations so um you know some someone might be striving for something in particular that makes absolutely no difference to you but is of the utmost importance to them. So, you know, it's like there's no there's no one right. And um, uh, you know, how how do we all like? It's amazing we communicate and get along as well as we do. <laughs> so, um, you know, just finding those connections. And um, so, I think when I think about installation and these objects, I want to create an environment that you know, that people are attracted to just visually and um, that will bring you in. But at the same time, you know, just um, kind of like looking at things like, well, what is that? You know, it, it looks like a monster. It looks like a, you know, an animal. It looks like a body. It looks like a, you know, you know, people could attribute it as happy, sad, you know, complicated, you know, different terms and everybody's right because it's their their takeaway and so um right now uh after we go through uh you know the um the work that 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 you're going through when i show you the work in the studio this is work that i'll be making an installation <laughs> well i did the best i could in the studio um and but i'll be installing it to take some proper photographs and documenting it where you could walk around and be in an environment um and be more immersed so this will be the new body of work i'll be showing you that i'm i'm into right oh, now so how so that's how I i'm talking about my statement i hope that that's, <laughs> that's helpful. exciting bonnie we get to it's like we get a sneak peek of, of all the latest hottest stuff right yeah. <laughs> thank you for sharing that with us that's yeah. exciting thank um, you. 
Okay, so, but you, gosh, you know, you almost answered a lot of all these questions I had prepared all in one statement. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I did prepare some questions, uh, but let's see. Um, I think maybe I should screen share with everyone so that I can show your work, Bonnie. Nice. And if there's a specific piece that you would rather talk about, um, you'll just have to tell me which one to click on. Okay. Does that sound good? That sounds okay. great. All right, give me one moment while I remember how to screen share. <laughs> I mean, wow. We normally use an application called Teams uh, at school. Oh, yeah, I've heard of it. Um, I'm not a Zoom god here. John, are you with me? <laughs> Let's see. Are you looking for the share button? I am actually looking for the share button right now. Share um, screen. Here it is. I got it. I got it. I think this is it. Desktop <laughs> share. Okay. Okay. Everyone should be able to see my, uh, whoa, excuse me. There we go. <laughs> All right. We're here now. Okay. So, um, Bonnie, these, uh, these are incredible photographs, by the way um of your work i can i just ask a question maybe and then um, we go from there sure Is that all right yeah bonnie i was wanting to know so okay when i look at your works one piece to the next and especially when i see them in this format you know with everything kind of in one space there seems to be a very strong um visual unity uh visual aesthetic throughout your works my question, though, is when you're creating these objects, these forms, these sculptural forms, um, are you making an, a conscious effort or, or a mental, you know, is it, your, your, are you, is it your mission to kind of make sure that they really work together as a body of pieces? Or is each one, are you approaching each one as an individual kind of a thing? Or is it both? I don't know. Yeah, I think that it's, that's a good question. I mean, I think it's both. Um, I feel like I usually have kind of an, a sense of what my work is about, and I probably have a couple words in mind, but I think just having worked over the many years, you kind of get used to what your sensibility is. Um, and, you know, mine is kind of organic, nature based, um, and kind of uh, kind of blowing things apart and uh, bringing them together, different elements like, but so when I'm, I'm working, I might, I might be like usually just picking up materials in the studio and like holding them together and seeing if they feel like they want to be together, if it, you know, um, and, and then I might be like um, hard to, uh, I might be get some idea like oh gosh I wish that thing was kind of peeling off how mm -hmm. could I make a, a piece of of that peel off of that and then maybe it's like oh I have to get some foam that'll resist that I'll do some tests on that and then you know I'll pull that off and it'll start hanging from there and then oh that gave me an idea for another so usually one process starts leading to another and then that usually involves, you know, a lot of uh, supply shopping and, oh, you know, just, you know, experimenting. So that leads me to my next question, Bonnie. Um, there are some unusual kind of combinations of material here. I'm talking about like the raw building blocks, right? So, I mean, am I, am I right in seeing like what looks to be like black rubber and then there's pink foam? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So how, Bonnie, how are you choosing these materials? Are you experimenting with them first somewhere to see if they do what you want them to do? Well, initially, it's not actually rubber. It's a, it is also a foam. Those, the one you're seeing that looks like a, a rubber is a, a two-part foam. Okay. So I work with a different, two different types of foam. One is a two-part and one is just a spray foam. Um, and then what I did initially, the reason I got started on that was I wanted to make skins of things. So I wanted objects that were empty on the inside, but just had the form on the outside, 
you know, I like a mold, a mold. Okay. And so, like for instance, that big tree piece that's leaning against the wall, I covered that with, um, with, uh, with a um, like Johnson's wax, and then I poured the foam over it, and then I pulled it off. And that's that uh, object which you can't only see on the top right hand corner the black object that's kind of swirling around we'll probably see it again yeah up there. okay all right that came and, from the tree right so but wow. i also made some hanging pieces that aren't actually showing in this one i don't even know if we'll have them but they just are like uh parts of trees um and i i just took pulled the skins off of them and let it slight be sliced open and hanging so then once i started getting into that foam then it was like oh i'm going to use it on other other objects as well and my then, next question for you bonnie uh is i mean i think you kind of already answered this but i mean i'm reading this is this in your mind is this a, is this a kind of self-portrait would you would it be okay to call it that yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah. So is that what why these things look so corporeal, so body like? Because yeah. it's a, an expression of yourself and who you are. But I as like you put it from the inside, is that right? Um. Or uh, all of a sudden, I I lost the. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hold on. Um, I got you, and I lost the. Um... I can stop sharing and then share again if that helps. Okay, let me see. Oh, I think I'm back. I'm back. You're back. Okay. What just Gosh. happened? Yeah. Technology drives me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so scary. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ask me that again about you said about body like and self portrait. Being corporeal. To me, when I look at the, I mean, like some of these things literally look like skin, flayed skin or internal organs. Yes. Am I off base here at all? No, not at all. Oh. That's that's so true. Okay. And it's um I've been looking a lot recently too, um, in keeping with the pandemic mood, at like Goya and um Hieronymus Bosch. Um oh, I love you know, Bosch. right. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. so like just the the sense of uh, you know, a heaven and hell, a you know, okay. not that I'm, I'm speaking spiritually about heaven and hell. I'm not. I'm just, you know, our own internal, like, falling apart or, um, you know, wholeness and body. And um, so, you know, I I think, yes, uh, I, I think it's self-portrait, but I, I also hope and think it's universal in the sense that, you know, how, how, um, how we kind of, I, I don't know, I hope, I hope that people feel a connection to that, that organic sense of, of body as well, which, I mean, you, you picked up on it. So that's, that's awesome. Yes, indeed. Um, is there a particular piece that you'd like to talk about? Um, I have a question about this one, if that's all right. Okay, yes, that's fine. Oh. I can talk about any of them. Okay, so whenever I, when I first saw this piece, um, the way that I kind of read this is it's a relationship between these two entities. They don't, to me anyway, they don't read as being one and the same. They read as being two separate kind of entities interacting with one another. Is yeah. that, is that a correct interpretation? Yeah. Okay. And I think it's a, uh, a discord, a, a disconnect, but also a connection. Like there's this little bit of a tethered wire only to it and um this one is called um i think branch and night water um and i was just thinking about like you know how we talk about let's say a wave and as if it's something separate from the ocean you know that's a common an analogy and you know what would it be to have a piece of the ocean a piece of the water so for me this is a piece of the water and then this I've been collecting these awesome branches and roots. And mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, a lot of my students know that and they bring me some awesome branches and roots. And when I go on walks, I pick things up and I shellac that piece. And it just seemed to me like something that would wash up in the, you know, in the water. And okay. it's like, you know, just abandoned, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. but somehow tethered. 
Okay, so then it is actually kind of one and the same in a way. Yeah. Um, that is a really beautiful piece. Um, okay. You're using oil paints, is that correct? This one is, uh, yes, I, I used foam just to make this slab. And then I pulled it off. I did a, a bunch of layers and then I wanted to change the colors so you can paint on this foam. And I, um, I ripped it up and I, I painted um, with acrylic first and then, you know, it, it just really needed something with a little more depth. So I did some oils on top of that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the color really is a beautiful addition. Um, I'm mm -hmm. really, I think it's gorgeous. I really Thank do. You. Um, so Bonnie, uh, can we talk about this fourth image, this fourth piece? The, okay. This is the one, isn't this the same piece that we're seeing here on the floor? Or is it not? It kind of looks it, like- It's not, it's not. I made oh. a bunch of those, but it came from the same piece. So yes, okay. I made what was a, um, like a giant mound on the table of like piles of, filling let's say and then i put a big tarp over it and it was about 10 feet by 10 feet by five feet and then i did spray foam all over the whole thing after i did the spray foam i i cut it up with um a um like a, a kitchen like a turkey uh knife <laughs> and then um so this is they're all slices of that I and then for the um like pink acrylic and pink foam and and black foam on top of it i understand well so okay so what i wanted to know um bonnie uh, and correct me if i'm wrong but were you always i don't think i think it's safe to say you've been doing this for a long time now but there was a time when really everything was more flat and two-dimensional hung on a wall right and then right. at some point you jumped off that wall and out into three-dimensional space I mean, to me, this reads as a sculptural form. Um, is it fragile? Is it difficult to hang something this organic? Um, it is it really, something you think about and it's while you're making it? I always figure I'll figure it out somehow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> something will come to me. Um, it's, it's fragile and it's not. I mean, it's pretty heavy. That much foam weighs a lot and it's big. And that one's called Cascade as an Object. So again, I was just thinking about what would this wave be without, you know, like just separated from everything else. Um, and uh, so to get that on the wall, I had to put, um, I put like a flange in the wall and then I had uh, pipes coming out of it. And then that's sitting on two, two pipes secured by flanges in the wall. Um, so, yeah. Uh, very well done. Very well done, Bonnie. Um, uh, so I know that you have this virtual, can you talk a little bit? Okay, so when I see this piece, I see an opportunity, it's got this white wall, right? And, and this makes me think of that virtual thing that you were doing where your photographs of artworks are superimposed on artificial backgrounds. Yeah. Is this, is this kind of like, would something like this work with that and why? Yeah, yeah. I've done some pieces and I can run through if we um, screen share over to my site later on, if we have time mm -hmm. to show show some of those because yeah. that's a recent project. Uh, let me, you may have to help me real quick, okay? Let's see. Oh, okay. I'll do it well, right I, now. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, why not? We're talking about it. Yeah, let's, yeah, sure. Let's show everyone the correlation. Well, that is to say if my computer keeps up. <laughs> Um, maybe. Okay. What is? Well, I did bookmark this, but what is the website for me, real quick? Uh huh. BonnieLebowitz.com. B o n n y l e i. Let's see if I spell that right. Mm, a little bit of a lag here. I think you got it. Okay. So where do I go from here? Um, on the third one down, the visitation project. The visitation project, okay. Would you like to tell everyone about this in your own way? Sure, so I, um, yeah, that's the first one I did right there. Um, so I, 
what happened was I was um, I was uh, disappointed. Of course, I couldn't have my show in New York, and these pieces are hard to show. It's not like you can hang it on a wall and just take a picture. So I've been looking for spaces to place the work and hang it, and it's, it's very challenging. And so, mm. you know, um, I found a few spaces, and then you know, like a, a gallery that you know the but one of the walls was cement and so it was a challenge and then you know one had steel beams like every place i've been trying you know had one issue after another and i, I have to be able to present the work somehow so um then i started thinking about doing you know bringing the work outside i i just had all different ideas some pieces i can photograph in the studio but some of them are just too big and they they don't look right so i just happened to be at uh my son moved to back to dallas and he and his girlfriend were redoing their they're doing their they just moved into a home and they were doing their uh their home painting get in this so they i was over there they they I took a shot of this that's all their wallpaper was just shredded all over the all over the floor and mm -hmm. I was like oh that's but I just took a picture I didn't think anything of it mm -hmm. and then I thought oh that would be so cool to install one of my pieces there yeah. and it was like how about if I bring a piece over and install it while you while you're working on the house and they were like well tomorrow we're cleaning this up to you know uh get painting and so I thought well I'm just gonna photoshop it in and yeah. so I came back to my studio and I photoshopped that piece in. And then I thought it'd be interesting for people to send me different environments. Um, so the rest of them pretty much are, are environments that other people have sent me that I then Photoshop my work into. And um, that's my friend Joey Brock's studio. And I put two pieces in there. It takes many hours to like Photoshop these in and make it look natural. Oh, I, I can only imagine. But how brilliant of you to come up with this idea. Thank you. And, uh, you know, this, this one was Photoshop actually too? physical. I'm sorry? Is this Photoshop too? No, that one oh. is, I was going to say that's one exception that I actually physically put that piece in a space. Okay. I was going to say the cast shadows. What? <laughs> yeah. So oh. this is that cascade object. Right. And I put it, a friend of mine in California, Deborah Kapoor, artist, um, she uh, she sent me this and it's just like, you know, a warehouse building uh, type place and, you know, we're pretty mundane. And I put this, you know, cascade object in there. It seems so alien, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Otherworldly. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, these, these, uh, oh, look at this, everyone. Bonnie, it's brilliant. Uh, the that juxtaposition is. that they present uh, it creates a whole new conversation in a way. Right. And it's just it, the, so beautiful to see them in this different context. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, and on a formal level, if you can forget for just a moment that that is some kind of a vehicle behind it. If formally speaking, if you're just looking at colors and line, texture and movement, that's a very nice juxtaposition. So that's good. I like that the line helps give it some, you know, structure, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Boy, this piece to me has a lot of movement to it, too. Very beautiful. Oh, look. This is your sculptural form right here? That's right. Oh, now that is a very nice pairing. And I can show you that. that I piece. wish I could zoom in, but I can't. Um, yeah. Oh, yes, I can. I lied. <laughs> there, <laughs> we there we can see a little bit better. You've even uh, kind of altered the opacity a little bit here. That's right. To so create more of that ephemeral moment you spoke about. Hmm. Wait, what was the title of that? I, I didn't quite catch that. Persephone uh, and Achilles. Oh, that, that one, oh, Persephone and uh, Achilles. So I had this piece, the and I can show you it when, when they're uh, after, is um, that uh, the piece with the wing, I've been using actual wings, real wings. Um, and so I attached those pieces, that's a, a plaster and wax piece. And then 
it, it, I had called it Achilles. Well, when Farrell Brickhouse sent me this, um, uh, sent me this piece, um, I, uh, I thought of that one and it was funny because I mean, the name of that sculpture is Persephone and I thought, wow, how perfect. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I just put them together to hang out it's there. And, yeah. What it was meant to be. Yeah. Wow. So this, this, um, this looks like a bone to me and you're making this from scratch, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's great. This is, look at this guys. Wow. <laughs> That's it's like, like overtaking it. <laughs> That's awesome. That one was fun because um, uh, Diane is an artist who's uh, uh, Tenerelli, whose uh, ceramics I have purchased a couple of. And anyway, she was she had moved into this home, and she was like embarrassed that she had her Christmas presents up. That I mean, her Christmas decorations up. That she just bought it some store. And it was just so, it was so, you know, suburban. Uh, and it was like, she got it up so early and she was like, and I was like, oh my gosh, send me that picture. And so uh, she sent it to me and I just put that, I'm one of my giant pieces hanging out. It's over very it. apocalyptic, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me think of all the sci-fi movies I've seen. The, <laughs> the blob. blob or, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's my favorite so far. No, I do yeah. love it. Um, man, you're, you're, the way that you work with these materials is, is just so fascinating. How you, you take ordinary materials and you're manipulating those ordinary materials into such an extraordinary form. And now you're creating these interesting juxtapositions between the sculptural form itself and creating these almost illusionary realities, like you said, uh, these other realities. Yeah. Wow. That looks like a giant brain. <laughs> it might be my brain. <laughs> oh no, another giant blobby brain thing. This is great. <laughs> wow, Bonnie, this is so cool. That piece is called Hunger Object. And this one. This looks painted almost. Thanks. That's a that's actually canvas. That a painting, a canvas that's painted, and I. I stuffed it and sewed it up. And so that's been in my studio hanging out for a while, but um, it was in, in one show. But anyway, I just thought it needed to be sitting on the shore, just kind of mm -hmm. sad. <laughs> my wife says it has an almost monolithic presence, a mysterious Thank monolithic you. presence. Very well, nice. Well, I have one called monolith coming up so she can see that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Wait, where's your, oh, I see, I see it. Yeah. Okay. This one is called Kiefer's Trumpet, and it was uh, the one before, and oh, that was uh, an ammunitions. It was like a in Pennsylvania. There's some uh, Stephen Barris sent me this picture, and it's an am was an am gunpowder factory like a mm. hundred years ago in Pennsylvania, or more. Wow. And so it reminded me of a Kiefer, so I put put my little that little piece up there. I understand that, that association. I love his work. Yeah. Um, this is also quite lovely. Yeah, and this one's monolith. Wow. I'm, I'm over here reading while you're while we're looking at it. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, sorry. Boop. Wait, are we at the, oh, no, there it is. Oh, it's probably going we're to at the end. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing those with us. I think those are yeah. absolutely successful and incredibly interesting. Back to your work here. Uh, so I have to ask you, I'm looking at this piece. This is one of my favorite photos of you, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think got lucky on that one. It's so perfect. Um, I mean, it looks terrifying, actually, in a way. Your work is so huge and complicated. It must take you a long time to figure out how to hang these things, right? Yes, and that one, um, I did a lot of monotypes on paper and with uh, wax, and uh, then I, um, I used ink to create the colors on the paper, so it was pretty open. And uh, then it was really satisfying just to cut all these shapes out 
it was kind of fun because you know a lot of my work is physical it's kind of fun to sit and just cut so um and then uh this was at a residency at michael david's at m david and co in new york and so i had 20 foot of square 20 20 square foot of space and those ceilings were 13 foot high or more and so um yeah i had to kind of figure out how to fill the space and and hang it uh bonnie um i have a question prepared here um it may be too soon to ask but i'm going to ask it anyway i don't know why um the question is uh when you're it'll, all of these forms are so large and and everything is, is just just a lot of material do you have a hard time storing all of this when, it, when it's between shows? How yes. do you manage all that? I'm not sure. It's getting to the point that it's pretty much on overload. Like I was on overload when you asked me to to do the um, to do this, you know, visit, and I was like, how am I going to do this? But I'm so glad you did. I mean, it forced mm -hmm. me to really like edit and clean up and get things put away. And so like a lot of the pieces that we had looked at, like the cascade and that they're sitting on the floor, sadly. Um, but, you know, I have other pieces up because I had to do new work, but it, it's still, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I have 700 square feet, but it's, it's not enough. Do you, do you, have you ever tried to like roll things over cardboard tubes with plastic covering or anything? Yeah, sure. Okay, sure. okay. Man, I can only imagine 700 square feet and it's not enough. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> you know, Bonnie, I, I, I have to ask this next question and, and I don't know why I feel compelled to ask it, but it's because I, I myself have run into a similar situation where I've got these ginormous pieces that are just taking up way too much space in my studio. <laughs> and, and they're just, they've sat there too long. Have you ever just destroyed a work of art or gotten rid of it completely? Yes, what I do, I usually try to do is, um, I'll use parts, I'll break it up and use it in future pieces. Okay. Um, unless it's something that's really solid that I'm like, you know, that needs to stay just as it is. I'm lucky that I have the two other studios and I can hang things on the walls in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the teaching studios. I'm uh, sure students are uh, very inspired by seeing your work everywhere. Well, thank you. Yes, I, I have a good, good crowd mm -hmm. and um, they're awesome. So yeah, it's, uh, I'll, I'll definitely use like pieces of one thing. And then it's sad, like some of them I have to put away and they do get, you know, just folded up damage, but uh but mostly reconfigured yeah bonnie do you mind if my wife asks you a question about your oh, work sure. sure so i've seen your work over the years and i feel like it's really kind of morphed uh and especially with the photograph I'm like that was really uh cool but um i don't know i just i really i really it wasn't more of a question as much as i just really enjoy how your work has changed i've seen some that were small i've seen some that are large and just, I really respond to your colors, to the oh. shape. Um, and so it's just really enjoyable. I feel like it's really progressed. And so it's kind of fun to see um, where you've come now. And so just, but anyway, my, I guess my question is how, how do you, um, mm. how do you come up with these concepts? Are you just working with them as you go and it just kind of shapes itself? Or do you kind of have a, image in mind when you start doing it? Is it more of how you're feeling at the moment? Is it more an emotional response to the material? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how, how I come up with the, these <laughs> <Pick one. laughs> yeah. yeah, um, with the concept or the objects themselves, you mean? Yes. Uh, how you create your piece in general. Is it, in, oh, is, okay. I think she's asking, is it an intuitive process? I yes, I think it's more intuitive. Um, I guess, you know, from doing it so many years, there's some sort of base of like the concept. So it almost feels like, I mean, this sounds like, I, I, I don't mean to, it, it just feels like I have a trust that no matter what I touch, it's going to relate to the overall. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, so I mean, I've kind of gotten to that point now. Mm -hmm. Yes, Whereas yeah. before it felt a lot more like um, planning and how am I going to make that fit? And um, now I think I, I just, I just make, 
and it's like, whoa, that that looks like that. Uh, Bonnie, uh, one of the things that I um, tell my three dimensional design students uh, is that every material has its own characteristic and its own kind of limitations. Um, it has a will of its own. Um, you know, an artist sometimes work very hard for a very long time to develop their own kind of visual language. And the Bonnie, I, I think that you have successfully created a very strong, cohesive and unique visual language with the materials that you use. And I know that wasn't easy to do and I know it took a lot of experimentation. Um, do you ever keep some of the, this is the next question? Do you ever keep some of the experiments, even though you might not consider them artworks? Um, I do a couple. Sometimes I keep um, some things that it's like, oh, I don't remember. Does that resist this or does that stick to that? And so I'll, be, I'll have like a few little samples, but in general, no. Mm -hmm. It's mostly just memory. It's all about space now. <laughs> <laughs> What's <Gotta> that? Go. <laughs> Yeah, oh. it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, you know, sometimes I forget, like, oh, wait, did that foam stick to that, or does it resist it, because sometimes you want it to resist, so you can pull it off, and sometimes, so, like, then I had to redo a little experiment, but, um, but anyway, thank you so much for your words, I appreciate them very much, but um, I, I do keep a few little things, but but not much. Usually it's just like, for me, it's kind of like when you take notes. For me, I never read my notes again. It's just <laughs> writing them is what kind of cements it in my mind more so than, um, mm. so. All right, so Bonnie, the next question is a hard one, okay? You said <laughs> no hard questions, but here it comes, okay? <laughs> okay, no, it's not hard, come on, just relax. Um, so the next question, though, is about the fragility of your work. Um, I, I, you're, I know that your work is in private collections. People have purchased your work for their homes and whatnot. Um, has, has there ever been an instance where the work has been damaged and you had to go back and repair it? And does that have an impact at all on being able to sell the work? No, thank goodness I have not had that issue. Awesome. Okay. All right. Um, you I know, would be terrified because if I bought your work, I would be terrified my six year old would come up to it, you know, and destroy yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Now, I have had people not purchase because they're afraid of that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, yeah, what if my dog comes up and wants to chew the bottom of that thing <laughs> yeah. right there? Right. You know, and then I have to make up things like, well, you could hang it really high or what about in the stairwell? And then, you know, um, you know, that kind of thing. But I decided a long time ago that, you know, my, you know, I mean, I am very fortunate that people buy my work and I'm always surprised that people really do. There are enough people in the world that take a chance. Oh, and absolutely. They will, yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, I've seen people that have the most traditional looking homes put the most unusual pieces in their home. And it's like so cool because they'll send me pictures. But, um, uh, you know, um, but on the other hand, I do know I'm missing a lot of sales, if you want to call it that, because mm -hmm. of the nature of the materials. And, you know, I just decided a long time ago that, you know, I'm just going to do what I'm compelled to do. And, and you're, you're uh, doing you wonderful know. things with that. You really are. Bonnie, um, can I, can I, can I, is it my turn to make a statement and just like make a comment and then you tell me what your thoughts are? Can we do that? Sure. So I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at your work, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm noticing this one almost really for the first time. I've, I keep skipping over it for some reason and now it's got my attention completely. And then I jump back up here to this piece and I'm compare. it's almost like I want to see them side by side because I feel like they're completely different. Yeah. Um, this one feels like a, a, a lifeless lump of flesh, uh, cancerous flesh. And, and this one feels so alive and vibrant and yeah. full of potential and with the gold even precious in a way. And this just seems so forlorn and gone. Yeah. Yeah, am I reading this right? Yeah, I think you're right. So, 
you know, guys, and I just I'm putting this out there for my students uh, who are who are listening, for the, everyone that's participating. One of the things that I was so excited about to share, um, I'm kind of articulating this for the first time. I was excited to share Bonnie's work with everyone, mostly because I feel Bonnie like your your pieces, your forms, are so in line with the pandemic right now. Whether you intended it or not, I mean, I know that wasn't part of your original, you know, thing, but but it does feel in line with that because there's there's a lot of sickness and there's a lot of of health issues, you know, people losing loved ones and and to me this resonates so powerfully with with this particular time in everyone's life. And so, um, man, Bonnie, um, just love your work. Um, can I ask you, is there one, one of the, I know you've, you've got more than, and you're going to share the new stuff with us, but right. is, of all the stuff that you've, you've given me to show everyone, is there one piece in particular you want to talk about more than the others? Or Well, if you'll scroll through, I can uh, see if there's one. Um. Well, gosh, it's hard to say. I think, I don't know, I could talk about it either, but let's say, <laughs> let's say uh, scroll back down a little a bit again. Um, is that the last one? Okay, I'm sorry, scroll back up. Okay, we could go to um, this one, the round one right there. Okay. That one's called Hunger Object. I don't know, the, there's two others that I would talk about too, would be Mind and Looming, the big one. But I liked Hunger Object because, um, I don't know, it, it speaks to so many issues for me. To me, it's like, that's the one that was also in that visitation uh, project, like eating up that house. Mm -hmm. um, and then I saw those two little teeth that remind me of a mouth. Um, mm -hmm. And that has foam. It's got, it's plaster, wire plaster foam. Um, and I don't know, just the word hunger and desire and, you know, this feeding ourselves and like the, our needs, what we want, 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 want. And then it just is never enough. And it just feels kind of looming and kind of sickening, but also interesting and kind of inviting at the same time. Like when you see it, you kind of want to hold it. It's a nice size. Mm -hmm. And um, for holding, it's like, I don't know, 20 inches, 20, uh, you'll see it maybe less. And, um, so I don't know, it just had so many connotations of just like, and then kind of being eaten up by this pandemic thing or eaten up by, I don't know, I don't want to be specific to the pandemic because I mean, just, you know, mm -hmm. life is fraught in general sometimes, <laughs> but um, you know, or how we think about things or our fears. So it, it says a lot about fears to me too. I see. Um, so I, I don't know, to me, it just had a lot a lot to it. I had a lot of connections to it. It feels like a very Rococo color palette mm -hmm. in contrast with all those men. And, and then the menacing, the shadows seem so menacing to me. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love Rococo, that period. Gosh. Uh, Bonnie, since you mentioned holding it, it brought to mind a question. Do you ever create pieces that you intend to let people hold or touch? Yeah, pretty much everybody. Like when I I play in this installation, people can pretty much touch anything that I'll have have out. Yeah. That's no problem. <laughs> that kind of goes against the norm, right? I mean, like most yeah. people are like, don't touch my art, okay? You know? <laughs> that's that's uh, awfully generous of you to, to, to create those moments for people. Yeah. Uh, Bonnie, um, would you like to take us into your studio? I want to see the new stuff, huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll do, I'll okay. do it for so let's see. How do I do this? Let me, um, how do I, okay, stop. I think you can make me a, you can make me a, a host or something. You can. Yep, I see it. All right, I'm making you the host now. And now you should, you're driving the bus. Okay. You look great, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, 
So if I move this around, you can see the studio now, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll walk you around. And um, so I'm going to unplug. Hopefully it'll stay charged the whole time. If I, if I see it going low, I'm going to come plug. I put an extension cord just in case. Okay, I want your laptop. Yeah, yeah. These things drain so quickly. Um, so, okay. So, um, oops. That ceiling is why I don't want to show, <laughs> show the work. <laughs> it's just the ceiling. It's okay. Wow, look at that. Bonnie? So, so these, let me get back so you can see. I don't know where I'm going to have to get to get back far enough for you to see the whole. Oh, wow. The whole space. Hold on. I have to basically go out the door. <laughs> Thank you. Going <laughs> <laughs> all of that, making all that trouble. Um, so each one of these, hold on, I can't, I don't have it in the right spot. Um, so that's hanging, it's a sheet of paper, but it's not regular paper, it's a handmade Japanese paper. Oh, I and, see the Bosch reference. Yes, so I have, I don't know how the heck I found it, but I found a JPEG online of Earthly Delights, and it was 500 megabytes. Wow. It took eight minutes to download. <laughs> so I can't have every detail. I can blow this thing up as large as I like. So this whole project, I, I hope you're, you're, you're able to see it. This whole project is all these, all of these hanging papers are add up to this, the, the square footage or the inches of the Garden of Earthly Delights. Uh, oh. I don't know how, how the color is coming out or. And, and again, for, for everyone, anyone that might have missed it, the reference to Hieronymus Bosch um, and the Garden of Earthly Delights is a reference to um, kind of an artist's interpretation of heaven and hell, good and evil. Is that right, Bonnie? That's right. Yeah. And so your fascination with, with this subject matter is because it has to do with, with your own experiences in life and, and, and what you're going through, I guess. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, wow, look at this. This is okay. great, Bonnie. You see this crazy, I don't know, can you see this crazy root thing on the floor? Yeah, that's crazy. Awesome. It's pink. I love pink. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I did it for you. I did it pink. Hold on. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll be there in 30 minutes. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. Um, this um, is, it's hard to oh, oh, wait, wait. Ah, okay. Sorry. okay. So, my one of my students lives on Lake Louisville or her she has a place there and um god I'm, I'm so bad at moving this thing um yeah I'm getting a little seasick I'm getting a little... <laughs> <laughs> I think I have to switch to my phone okay to get this. do you mind holding on okay yeah yeah oh you know what I do I have a little webcam thing hold on maybe this will work and a tripod Shoot. Sorry. Funny. <laughs> oh, Disney. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see if I can get this a little bit better. I, I, I could actually control the phone a lot better, right? <laughs> so, uh, geez. Uh, can I ask you a question, Bonnie, while you're doing that? Yeah. Okay. Did the inspiration for this format come from doing the uh, visitation project? You know, su superimposing sculptural forms. No, on no, no. Okay. This all came first. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, yeah. I'm going to switch over to my phone. I think I don't, I have an external camera. I'm just not sure. Let me see if I can, I don't know if I can switch to it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, oh, wait, maybe I can. Uh oh. Uh oh. Come back. <laughs> no, buddy. I don't. You're frozen. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hold on. Man, technology, right? <laughs> okay. 
Sorry, hold please. Uh, I'm gonna move to my phone. I think, you know, since it's better quality image maybe or something. No, just I'll be able to manipulate the the um the scene a little better. Yeah, without yeah. rocking the boat so much. I'm sorry. Uh, Bonnie is um, always has been um, an artist after my heart. And I've always responded so much to your work, Bonnie. I, do you know, Bonnie, I, I still have the piece we made together in your studio. Um, yeah. you were well, you were teaching me, right, how to even work with wax in the first place. Oh, yeah, then. but I cherish it. I think it's, it was so much fun making that. If anyone's never worked with wax as a painting medium in caustic, you have to try this. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you uh, okay? Yeah. Can you hear me? I hear you. I also see you. Okay. Oh, I see you. You're on the other feed now. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I think I need to make that one. Or no, everyone, you can just pin her secondary feed to make it the the large one. Oh, see, I can hold this much better, right? Can yes, indeed. That? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, better. That okay. Okay. So, um, so, okay. Yeah. And I can see. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, I have to tell you, I love your, your vibrant color palette. This is so alive. And did you, did you say this was, uh, you're recreating scenes from this one painting? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm using it as an inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually a photo. Mm. Can you see this painting on this piece? Mm -hmm. So that, that right there, that particular um, image, on there is a photograph of 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 this piece. Mm -hmm. this so, okay, so you're taking photographs of existing painting or sculptures and then applying them to these surfaces. Yeah, at least in this case for this one. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, I'm working with the. Um, so sorry, I can't see. Uh, are you using an archival inkjet printer to print yes. these? Yeah, okay. I have a really good printer. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, now I'm going to go back over to this side. So each one of these tall papers is um, painted in the back and the front. So when I do install it, I'm going to be able to uh, create an environment that you could just walk around and sure. see. Everything. Space is needed for sure. Uh, Bonnie, would you please mind, would you mind just listing for, for everyone some of the uh, materials that we are seeing? Uh, because it's, I know it's not just paper. And so can you list some of this for us? Sure. So this, uh, let's say, so this is the photography applied. There is oil paint. Um, I actually use some pigment sticks and um, after I got, actually, okay, so I applied this this paper is, like I said, a big Japanese handmade paper. Mm -hmm. It's very thick and heavy. And I um, tore it. I applied some uh, PVA uh, because I wanted to paint with oils on it. So I wanted a protection on it, but I didn't want it to, to make it archival, but I didn't want to have like a white gesso. So I used a PVA and so that's clear, and then I could also collage with it. And then on top of that, I did oil sticks. Um, and oh, before I did that, I um, took the paper and I, uh, I don't know if you can see this very well, but it's all rusted. I, I took some iron filings and I um, added vinegar and then I threw it as a wash. Um. Bonnie, we lost you. Or we lost the cell phone feed. I mean, we're seeing the picture. We lost the audio. Can you hear us? Uh, 
I'm going to make you host again. Or did, whoops, did I just make John Conti host? No, Bonnie's the host. I'm raising my hand. Bonnie, can you hear me? We can't hear you anymore, sweetheart. Something happened to the audio feed. Darn it. Uh, we don't hear you. Maybe if you leave and rejoin. Uh, oh, there, okay. There went our artist. Wait, she's back. Hmm. Oh, problem solved, problem solved. Let's see. Bonnie, let's see if I... Uh, sorry. Oh, there you I are. Can, I'm sorry. Lost you there for a second. Okay. Awesome. Uh -huh. Okay, Bonnie, you just, by explaining your process a little bit, you just uh -huh. said something very clear that was not clear before. These flat painted panels, if you will, on paper or paper pieces, yeah. I did not know you were painting both sides. You are turning them into sculptural forms by hanging. Right. Them. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then this one is, I mean, uh, let me get some light back here. Oh, so wow. This Look at that. Foam oh. on it. This one in particular, I did, I'm really in, entranced with like uh, the colors from India, the miniatures, and I use a lot of this very unusual like teals and peaches and yellows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to capture some of that. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, so once I can get the lighting on these things, you know, back and front, the, uh, the install is going to be the end of December. Mm -hmm. But you can see I'm also going to have these, like, objects. Um, Wait, Bonnie, Bonnie, where's the install? Yeah. It's at a friend's uh, studio. And um, it's it's not a gallery, but it's just a gorgeous space. And are you so, going to have an intimate viewing or? No, um, I I uh, it, I'm just doing it for documenting the work. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, I look forward to seeing that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm gonna make a video of it too, I believe. And then, like, here's that. Let me see if I can get this. That hunger object is um, hanging in front. So I want these objects to relate to the painting. To the painting. So that'll be in front of it. So that's the I don't know if you can see that. Sorry. Um can I ask you one hard question? Just one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if, if, <laughs> she's like, no, don't. Yeah. Um, well, okay, so we have paintings by Hieronymus Bosch. We also mm -hmm. have a, kind of a historical tradition, Bonnie, that has been established for some time now of treating paintings like sculpture and sculpture like painting. You know, at one point, it, you know, it was not commonplace, right, for people to, you know, hang paintings out into three-dimensional space or to even apply color to sculpture. So um, if, I, if I asked you, uh, you know, is, what is the history? Historically speaking, if, could you mention some art historical references that might have inspired you or motivated you in some way? Um, well, I, I've always loved um, Renaissance. I've loved, you know, um, Rococo that you, you mentioned. Um, I think like my earliest loves have been like Peter Paul Rubens um in history and um i uh i just connected with the he has one there was one particular piece that made a big impact on me that i always look at um and I'm trying to remember oh it's a massacre of the innocents mm. and i've just always had that reference like in around me um and, you know, I think everybody just connects to different pieces at different times. And then I think uh, probably, maybe it doesn't show in these, in these works, but I love the abstract expressionists. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. here's another piece. This one's a particular kind of plastic. Hold on if I can get it. Melted plastic. But, yeah, that's a melted plastic. 
Oh, Lord, are you wearing uh, respirators when you're working? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All well, right. this one is a particular material. It's unusual. It's, um, what it is, is it's a, you can heat it and it sticks to itself. It's actually used for, for like theater, um, hmm. to make, um, costumes, I guess, and hmm. things. Um, that doesn't make it any safer, but it, yeah. yeah, it's still melting plastic. But, <laughs> and then, and I'll show you some things on the table that, I'm going to be hanging too, if you like. So, um, okay. different, ob different objects I can hold up. Like, so this is. Woo! That's pretty. <laughs> Let me put it in front of a white wall so you can see it. So, is, um, this, is this from Smooth On? Are these materials that are that color? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. They are. Mm -hmm. I've worked with some uh, cast polyurethanes and plastics myself. Um, they're beautiful to look at for sure and the contrast between the natural and the synthetic is interesting right mm -hmm. here's that piece with the um with the feather uh, with the wing oh wow oh I, w I didn't see the colors so much before i see wow that's nice well you were right i just desaturated it for mm -hmm. you know for the purposes of that photo so bonnie is a, a painter a sculptor um, she's a photographer, she's a, a digital artist, she's uh, an installation artist. <laughs> I guess I, I get bored easily. <laughs> yeah, it's all over the place, you know. <laughs> Bonnie, you're amazing. Uh, I love your work, and I can't tell you how grateful I am that, that you agreed to share you and your, your work with us today. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I really uh, I appreciate to, it. I just want to, we're almost done. I want to wrap it up, but I thought I would wrap it up by inviting the viewers to ask any questions if they wanted to. Is that all right with you? Okay. Okay. Does anyone uh, have a question for Bonnie today? Um, hi, Bonnie. Joanne. Hi. Oh, hi, Joanne. <laughs> so, Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. This is as close as I've come to meeting you in real life. <laughs> one, one of these days. <laughs> yeah, right. So I, I really have, I wanted to go back to a materials question, which is you, you use foam, the foam thing that you paint acrylic on top of. What kind of foam is that? I mean, it looks like a sheet. I don't know. Not, I mean, what oh, kind oh, of that one. do you use? Yeah. Yeah. So that film is a two-part film, and I've used it on a lot of the different 3D objects that you see. The, the one that looked like a sheet was only because I poured the film on. What I did was I, I needed something to res that would resist it, so I took a giant board, I covered the board with wax, and then I poured the foam on it because the foam won't stick to the wax. So it released, and then I had just a big sheet of the foam. Okay. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, uh, yeah. It's kind of fun. Bonnie, you're using materials because they do what you want them to do. It isn't necessarily that you wanted to work with foam. It's that foam gives you the surface and the texture you desire. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Right. I understand. I mean, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, I, I want to use materials I, I just feel excited about and then I might make an, up an excuse to do that that's funny <laughs> does but anyone for, else have a question for Bonnie yeah, so. okay Bonnie thank you yes. so much for your time today thank you you're that's awesome Oh, you are. Thank you so much. I am honored and appreciate Wade College and for you, Jason, inviting me to do this. And it's it's an honor. I really appreciate it. it and it it's a it's a real boost. I, I you know we don't get to talk to people about our work enough. It just feels fantastic, and I really appreciate it. I started this uh, this virtual studio visit um, as a way to connect students with artists because it's so hard right now to go to galleries and museums. And it's been an exciting adventure, it really has. And, and having artists like you, wow, you've made it exciting. So thank you thank again. You.
Thank you. Uh, Bonnie, I will be sending you, or somehow I'll, I'll share the recorded uh, session with you, okay? Fantastic. Thank Just give me time to figure it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much, Bonnie. Thanks, Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.